All right, good afternoon, viewers. We are at uh, Tammy Hutchins' virtual book launch here on Facebook. And uh, Tammy has written a beautiful story of her uh, art journey. It's a very intimate story, and she's going to read some excerpts from it. And we're arriving at Tammy's studio with some of her creations are on hand here to also be part of her book launch. <laughs> so thank you for joining us today. I'm going to video this, do my best. We don't have really high speed internet, so we're hoping that this doesn't blur out on us. And here is the artist herself, Tammy Hutchin. Hello. You just passed Clatsy, our little baby camel, and Clarence the big eagle, and there's glass. There's a glass bouquet here, and there's a glass dork that I created last year in collaboration with Olaf, who's behind the camera. And this is Franny. Franny the ferocious guardian angel dog. And there's Georgette and Cassandra and Cindy and all of my animal friends here for this book launch today. So I would like to welcome you into my studio. a little bit of reading, some bits and pieces out of the story. And I'm going to get the door so that hummingbirds don't fly in because they're just doing a live video. Um, Is the reading today? It's a live, <laughs> a live video on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Someone was so beautifully enthusiastic that they came to my studio. Thank you. you said the address and everything. So ah, uh, okay. It's online on your Facebook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for coming, though. You're welcome. Yeah. I'd love to get a copy of the book. Okay. So I. You're on. You're on video, Tammy. Live, international internet. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy's signing a book. And then, um, we'll arrange the other later. This is not staged, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is pretty exciting. The last time, the last time I saw you, I was talking about making this book. Oh, I know. And now it's made. There you go. Oh, thank you. I'll get you some change. <laughs> Doing a little business. Just hang on, everybody. Don't go away. Yay, book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you, Annette. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. You too. Goodbye. <laughs> bye bye. bye. <laughs> okay. So I guess that people who make live videos all the time understand that these kind of things happen. <sighs> so welcome to my studio. I think I'll give you a little bit of a spin around. This is Camille. My, our beautiful camel, Camille. And um, this is my book. So today it's all about my book and all of the art and the animals that I created are here in support of this book. Tender, brave spirit. And 
and expressive life almost missed. Words and Art by Tammy Hudgen. Forward by Sheila Norgate and Ode Howard. So there's the front and the back. And now I'm going to read, I'm going to do a little reading from it. I have some little pages marked. But I'll just um, show you a few of the pages leading up. Here I'm going to start, right on this page. It says, Truth. For a long time, I truly believed I didn't have one ounce of creativity in me. I feel like I should say that again. Truth. For a long time, I truly believed I didn't have one ounce of creativity in me. That, that lasted until I was almost 40. So, yeah. That's what this page looks like. And this book is a story of how I went from believing that to believing something very different. Even with my creative accomplishments, these external successes that I thought would solve all of my problems, I can still fall back into old patterns, to the way I felt as my tender, tough, younger self, the girl who was bottled up, filled with self-loathing and self-doubt. My old toxic patterns have left less hold over me as I learn to love myself, to extend compassion to myself, as I've learned to be my own best friend. It looked like somebody else just came. I wrote it a few times on my thing that it was a Facebook Live event, but I get it, not everybody sees all of that. Facebook's not, is a little confusing too. I think somebody just brought you some baked goods. Oh, how beautiful. Was that Christy? No, it wasn't oh. Christy. <laughs> okay, I, I'm not for baked goods. Okay, I'm going to carry on reading. Self-expression didn't have to become a career. I believe the most important part is to allow some form of expression to come from within me. I can dance, sing, sew, paint, write, knit, bake, make, build, live, love. I know how my life transforms when I give myself permission to honor my individual expression without criticism and harsh judgment from self or other. I've created this book to share a small sampling of my artwork, my thoughts and musings on creativity and on living a creative life. Having a career as an artist was never something I thought I'd be doing in this lifetime, or actually really any lifetime, as I'll share with you. My wish is to encourage the creative spirit that dwells in all of us, to allow this potent energy to be expressed, for our voices to be part of the collective offering. And I'm going on to the next page. This painting was one of the first paintings that I made and it says trust your instincts. We know and I was it's learning sorry. how to uh, just learning how to paint them and it's still one of my favorites. Can we get a close look at that? Just hold it steady. And I think um, this maybe even help <laughs> other one help it from spinning. Okay, so this book is for everyone, and especially for those who feel something is missing from their lives. Maybe you have a hole in your soul like I did. This book is for the self-doubters and self-saboteurs, for the creatively wounded, and anyone who desires to be more fully expressed in life. Self-expression is essential to our well-being. I believe we all have a creative voice. It may be hidden and buried, 
underneath the muck of a lifetime of critical self-judgment, smothered under the sometimes insensitive or even harsh voices of teachers and relatives. It may require a treasure hunt, an excavation, holding bright lamps and flashlights to illuminate the way in the shadowy darkness. Connect with your soul. There is no doubt in me that the creative fire is inside all of us. We might just need to fan the embers. May this book let you know you are not alone. May my story ignite a spark in you. Yeah, I'm going to scroll forward a little bit further. And I'll just hold. I'm not going to go through every page because there's 171 pages. And that was after doing quite a bit of editing. <laughs> so, um, some of these are my art. Everything in here is created by me, all of the art. So I'm going to read this page. Can we see a little bit more of the book? Uh, okay. Like to just, just while I'm in here in this frame. Yeah, perfect. So I'm, I'm amongst the, the pictures of my art and, and life is the story of my creative journey from little to, to big, from then to now. This is then. Was it challenging, Tammy, may I ask, for you to be vulnerable and tell this story of not always an easy path to your art well, career? Been to make, I've been wanting to make a book for a while. I would say at least six, seven, eight years. And I was thinking that it would be a book uh, that was going to be about art, like my art and kind of more showy art photos and kind of like for my best collectors or something and type of book. And then as I just got closer and closer to writing a book, I knew that wasn't the book. And then in the last year, you know, the universe answered and I found the perfect exact guide um, and support group to make this book. And that was, I did a course with Sabrina Ward Harrison and it was called Liberate and make the book you most want to find. And I knew that that was the, this was the book I would want to find. This was the, I made the book that I most wanted to find. And this is, this is it. And I'm, so yeah, the journey of revealing everything, uh, it just came in stages and that made it, that made it easier. It wasn't all one big revealing because this, this process took a while to write and yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. I, I'll share with you because I'm seeing the screen here and you're having many, many comments from viewers who are uh, have lovely things to say. Okay. Your life in words and drawings, so wonderful. Okay, Love that you going. let yourself get a little messy. Aww. Okay, I'm going to keep going, so I'll, I will hopefully I'll be able to see those later. So this page was, I'll show you after how this page was made. And for as long as I can remember, I have loved sun shining through colored glass, old tiny glass bottles and stained glass windows. I went to a glass shop with my grandma when I was about 18. I was enthralled with the mess, the tools, the colors. It was all so mysterious to me. Creating with glass seemed akin to casting magical spells. Making creating was for special people. That was definitely not for someone like me. I truly believe that. That was not for me. I never even considered that I could, could do that. So 
that was when I was 18, so it took me a couple more decades after that. <laughs> and some more pages of the book. And I'll read, this is kind of in the middle of times, growing up as a teenager and young adult. I didn't feel like I belonged where I came from, and I didn't know where I did belong. I tried in vain to shapeshift myself into relationships, jobs, and other people's expectations, often failing miserably and losing more of myself in the process. My creative impulses didn't have healthy expression. As a result, this potent energy leaked out of me in unproductive, unhealthy ways. I created drama in my personal life. I lost myself in abusive relationships, substance abuse, and other risky behavior. I routinely made bad decisions. Sadly, I often felt like a loser. I felt out of place. So that was kind of, that's just a little bit of in the teenage and early adulthood. And... And this just kind of shares, and it's kind of hard to put a whole life into, into a book, and it was really about the creative journey. So this is a page on shame. I won't read that right now. You will be able to read that in your, in your own book. And encouragement matters. This is a picture of a quilt that I made. I'm going to come in on that one if you don't mind. I'll okay. get a little bit closer. And then the horse. Uh, I took that photograph of a horse. This is your quilt here? Yeah. A close-up of a quilt that you made. I made last year, yeah. Um, first time I ever made a quilt. Total hodgepodge crazy quilt that brought me so much pleasure. And a whole page in the book later about a term that came out of that called quilt mode, which is the essence of it is freely expressing and not and not and just learning how when I bring in judgment or try to have a desired outcome I suddenly what wasn't having fun anymore so it's like wow that's I gotta get back into the fun this was so much fun how did I get back there and I was able to do it so I learned something really valuable and the horse and Sorry. the horse is a from a photograph that I took in when I was visiting in Alberta last year and then I printed it and I glued it onto a, a wooden panel and then I painted all around it um, with the kind of mixed media stuff. And then up here, there's some little words, a little message in here. Things to do today. Love, breathe, feel, grow, accept. <laughs> Things to do every day. Mm. And then there's more more pictures, more of the story, this precious life. I believe in innocence and wide-eyed wonder, and that's true still in my life. So I'm going to read this page. This is a mixed media page, and I'll show you some of the full pages of how this actual book page was made to be in here. I'm learning to listen more deeply to the inside of me. I'm learning to feel my feelings as a way to know myself, to know my preferences, my desires, my dreams, and to claim them. What do I feel? So many years of unacknowledged feelings buried inside of me. So many tears to cry. And so much unexpressed joy, too, to uncover and reveal what's really going on inside, at least to myself. And then this other page is another thing that's been an issue, <laughs> probably for other people, too. I've used comparison as a way to know myself. This was the only way I knew to know me. In comparison to others, I would compare everything and most of the time I would judge myself inferior in most ways. 
If I deemed myself superior, it brought only a fleeting feeling of relief. I was knowing myself from the outside in. I was knowing myself by what others told me about myself and by what I intuited by people's responses or reactions to me. I believed what I saw and heard. It's a very limiting way to see and know myself. And here it says, comparison is the thief of joy. And then there's more uh, pages. Uh, I realize, well, it started with the older I get, then I cross that out. I realize I need a lot of solitude. <laughs> That's just something I really just owned and claimed in the last few years because I always felt kind of ashamed of that. Uh, like there, I was weird, there was something wrong with me and now I, I love it, I'm claiming it. and I like to be with myself and all my animal friends <laughs> and the forest and nature. <laughs> And there's more pictures. Are you able to show us a bit of the process of yeah, how you've I made will. some of these pages? Yeah. And then this page says, there are guides and spirits all along the way who will befriend us. You can just hear the tune behind those words, can't you? All along the way. So spirit guides are a big part of my process. I check in and... I feel very supported by nature and, and the animal world. And um, I'm going to come back to this to finish up, just kind of bringing you to a bit of a, a place. But I want to show you, you saw some of the pages. And so now I, um, the actual pages. So this is what these pages looked like as I was creating them for the book. So this is on a piece of paper bag and cardboard. And um, I glued a photograph on there, I think, and then I painted all around and, and wrote all over it. And then I photographed it, a high resolution photograph. And that's what I ended up uploading. Which, like, I did all the technology uploading this book into a program called BookRite, which was a huge, huge learning curve. It was at least as daunting as getting the words down for the story. And I had so much support in that group of liberators with Sabrina and um, other women and who, men who were making books too. So there's one page. And then I don't think I showed you this page. It's near the beginning. But there's another page that was, um, you'll recognize it when you see the book. Uh, and that's just all collaged and it's on paper and those then like photographed. Same with this, this is in the early part of the book. You'll be able to read so it'll like wax paper over top of photographs, and then I photographed that. This is the back, the front and the back cover. So you wouldn't necessarily think like 90% uh, of this book was made like real life. And there's a little bit of digital magic, but I don't know how to do. I'm not a photoshopper or anything. I learned just the skills I needed. See, here's this page. There's a whole bunch of pieces to it. And that's the one that I, I just read about learning to listen to myself and comparison. So that's, <laughs> that's what that looks like. <laughs> and this is the little one about needing solitude. That's just on a paper like that and I think that's all for those ones and now I will read a little more so the story is kind of going from not creative to getting more creative and and then really believing in creativity. Like even when I was first creating and making art and selling it, I didn't, I didn't totally believe that everyone was creative. I thought I was just getting really lucky and that was gonna run out, the luck was gonna run out, the well was gonna run dry, and then I would be out looking for a job again. 
and you'll read in my book. I had a, I've had a hundred different jobs in my life. I like I never found my place in terms of work. I did everything, and you can read about it in here. So, um, more of my journey, just more of the words. But I needed to get my story in. I, I could have made it all visuals, which would have been really fun, and I love the idea. I just needed it to get a bit more of my you know story that I really wanted to tell. And I'm going to just kind of get back to here. So here I am. I've been making glass art for a while. And I'm starting to paint. And story time. Imagine inside me there are two girls. The older sister who wanted to be liked, respected, and praised. What will people think was a major concern for her? Will they laugh her out of town for this messy, inexplicable departure from her pretty glass art? Just stick with glass, it's popular, and you're finally good at something. Don't change, she says to herself and her troubled look, some little sister. Don't rock the boat! The little sister was messy, she swore a lot, was very rebellious, and didn't give a F-U-C-K what people thought of her. She was going to make paintings, and she was going to make them as messy as she wanted. The art didn't have to make sense to anyone but her. It took me a few years, massive amounts of art making in both mediums, and conscious, intentional personal development before these two parts of me could stand side by side in mutual respect, love, and admiration. <sighs> Phew. That was a lot of creative, ener potent creative energy tied up in that tug of war. Once released, the energy buoyed me and allowed me to step into larger, more daring and risky projects in my art practice and in my life. These internal pieces of me could now work together rather than fighting and creating stress, anxiety and confusion. Trust. So there's lots more content there. I'm just giving you little snippets and some more pictures of paintings and words. Claim your own true power. That was one of the first paintings that I made and, uh, and it sold right away to a, a woman who just Totally was, yes, that's for me. And I'm just going to, there's my quilt page. You can read about quilt mode. That's a term that we use in our house now. <laughs> and now, now I'll get into the end. I think I'll just read. I might read this, the wrap. I'll read a little bit from the wrap. I want to be selfish in the best possible way. If I could write that line again and print it, I'd say, I want to be full of myself in the best possible way. I want to take care of myself first, and by so doing, I'm better able to care for others, to contribute to community, to create beauty, to be in the flow of life. I've spent a lot of my life working my ass off, striving for acceptance and hustling for worthiness from outside of myself. I was always silently asking, am I good enough yet? Am I lovable now? I was jumping hoops and people pleasing. I was resenting and rebelling. So messy and not in an artsy way. I'm worthy merely of my existence not as the result of anything I do to prove my worthiness. We all are. Now, finally, I'm allowing myself more freedom. So, relax. And there's a page about artistic mentors. I'm going to leave that for you to discover. And I'll just end on this 
Getting close to the last page. With some effort and self-awareness, I'm feeling happier, lighter, and more free than I ever have. I only need to let go <laughs> of the end results. As I release more and more of the negative habitual thought patterns, as I let go, I feel lighter and more accepting of what is. And then, what is can be amazingly beautiful. The creative fire is alive and well in me and in you. And here on this page it says, never give up on a dream. Let go, surrender. And then I have a list of resources, some of the things that have really helped me along the way. Different meditations, Tara Brock, Pema Children, Elizabeth Gilbert, Anne Lamott, Julia Cameron, Carla Ricca, Pinkola Estes etc. And you can discover that on your own. And a thank you page. And can I come in on that page, Tams? Yeah. You have a gallery in the book? Yeah, I have a gallery in the book. And then shine mm. your light. Shine your light. And finally, really letting my light shine and it's taken me it's taken me it's taken me the time it's taken me and that's okay <laughs> and here it is so oh wow beautiful wonderful can you tell um the viewers how they might acquire this beautiful yes, book so after this video post i will share links in the comments you can go to my website, TammyHetchum.com, and there's a, a page there called New Book. You just click on that. If you're local Gabriola, you can choose the pickup option, and I will. you can pick it up from me here. You pay for it online. You pick it up from me here. And if you're in Nanaimo, I've arranged with my beautiful friend, Chiki Monkey Glassworks. If you are from Nanaimo and you want to buy a book, you can pay for it online through that link on my website and I will leave it there for you and everyone else from further away, family from other provinces and everybody else, you can order it on the delivery option and that gets printed on demand from this book company and they'll ship it right out to you. So Fabulous. Yeah. Can you uh, perhaps just for one minute, Tams, uh, tell us about an exciting new project. I, oh, yeah. I've heard rumor that you're doing an online teaching course coming up. Yes, I am creating a course about um, freeing yourself, basically um, just um, feeling more free in your life and in your art and the medium is going to be an art journal, just a blank journal and I'm going to show you all kinds of different techniques and, and tools to, to play and have a good time with that and some of the grounding and other kinds of rituals and processes that I use to support my creative life that don't have anything to do really with the creative part, but it all feeds into how free I can allow myself to be and how much I can let go with walking barefoot in the forest every morning or something like that. So yeah, that's going to be in the fall. So that won't happen for a while, but you can sign up on my website. There's a sign up page if you want to get information about that and you can find this my book on there and I'll also share links in the comments when I finally upload this which could take the A's because of our full Wi-Fi so I'm glad you're here for the live one thank you for coming I am so deeply honored and grateful that anybody is watching this at all I am thrilled so thank you thank you thank you